Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. This video is gonna be a little bit different. Today we're taking a look at six different Skechers Performance running shoes. I'm gonna compare them and then rank them from my favorite to least favorite and then kind of tie in some of the common threads I kind of noticed between all of the shoes. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Skechers Performance. However, they did not have a chance to preview this video and this final synopsis is my own. I would also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing so I can continue to make these videos. Here we go. And one last thing, we have the brand new Ryan's Running Review logo in the corner. My brother got for me for Christmas. It looks pretty cool. It's an LED sign that's supposed to look like a neon sign. Uh, but I'd love to get your guys thoughts. Should I change it? Should I move from the corner? Should I turn the brightness up? Should I turn it down? If you have any strong feelings, be sure to put them in the comments. All of the shoes we're taking a look at today are made by Skechers Performance, which is a subdivision underneath the Skechers shoe brand. Now, I realize that sounds confusing, but a typical Skechers shoe is kind of more like a lifestyle walking shoe, while the Skechers Performance shoes are actually legit running shoes that can compete with like Nike, Adidas, Saucony, and all of them. A big underlying factor that ties all of these shoes together is the Hyperburst foam. And if you're not familiar, Hyperburst is a super critical foam, which has a really interesting manufacturing method. Essentially, they start with this like really tiny block of foam. They put it into a pressure cooker. They inject all these gases. That tiny block expands and has all these spherical cell-like structures that look like this. I'll put a picture on the screen that give it a really great weight to volume ratio. The Hyperburst midsole is much more resilient and much lighter than conventional EVA midsoles. And on top of all of that, it's kind of like a translucent midsole which is kind of cool so if like you shine a light under it you can kind of see how it illuminates the the midsole itself i talked to sketchers and they said they were actually looking at potentially putting a light inside one of their midsoles and having a cool adult light up shoe i hope they do it because i would love to wear that but like i mentioned before the hyperburst foam has different kind of levels of cushion and softness among each of the models and we'll get into that as i kind of give you my thoughts on each of the shoes another element that is tied into each one of these shoes in various levels is something called hyper arc now hyper Arc is Skechers' take on a uh, rocker geometry within the midsole. This was previously referred to as M Strike. They're phasing out the M Strike branding and now calling it Hyper Arc. So we get Hyper Burst Foam and Hyper Arc Rocker Geometry. And according to Skechers, it's basically the different curves throughout the midsole that give you a really nice rocker feel that kind of keep you up on your toes and rolling through your stride or gait. The last element that ties each one of these shoes together is the outsole because they're all made of Goodyear tire rubber. Now, according to Skechers, this rubber is the same compound found in Goodyear tires, all weather tires, uh, which means you're gonna get a higher quality rubber compared to something that's probably uh, just in-house from a regular brand. You're seeing this from a lot of other companies. I believe like Adidas uses Continental tire rubber for some of their outsoles. Something interesting to note is that all of these shoes are really light. They all weigh under 8.7 ounces, in fact, for a men's size nine. The heaviest shoe being the Max Road 5 coming in at 8.7 ounces, and it makes sense because it does have the thickest midsole with a really plush upper, and we'll get into that later. However, to have all these shoes be under 8.7 ounces for a men's size nine is pretty incredible, uh, especially compared to the competition out there, considering most of these are like daily trainers, and we do have the racing shoe with the Speed Elite. Now, to cut down on weight, a lot of the uppers pretty much throughout most of these models are really thin and have very breathable mesh and the tongues are somewhat identical it's a very thin tongue and all of the tongues on these shoes are non-gusseted so those are all the major things I noticed while running in these six different Skechers Performance shoes. Next, we're gonna rank them from my favorite to least favorite. Now, this is my personal favorite order for my, for my running and my style and just kind of what I personally liked. I, I wouldn't necessarily kind of rank this as like, this is a good shoe to a bad shoe, but I will kind of give you my thoughts on what I liked about each shoe and what I didn't like about each shoe and then kind of rank it again from my favorite to least favorite. Here we go. Coming in at number one is the Max Road 5. The shoe weighs 8.7 ounces, costs $135, has 38 millimeters in the heel, with 32 in the forefoot for a six millimeter drop. So why did I pick this shoe for number one? Well, it was just a lot of fun to run in. It's incredibly light for the amount of cushioning that you get. And the Hyperburst foam, I wouldn't say is soft, at least on this version for this particular model, but it did provide a nice level of cushioning. And because the, the foam wasn't overly soft, it made it really easy to kind of pick up the speed, which is something I really liked. Plus the shoe was just really versatile and comfortable. I had no problem kind of taking it for a fast run, slow run, long run, or short run. It just seemed to work for any situation that I wanted. 
And on top of all that, I thought it had the, probably the most comfortable fit, or at least for me, just because it included some extra padding in the ankle and Achilles area. A really interesting feature about this shoe is that it has an H pleat uh, in the forefoot slash midfoot section. I'll put a picture on the screen here. And it really does give you a little bit of rigidity in that forefoot section to give you, uh, I guess, a little bit more propulsion or help you kind of pick up the pace. Personally, I wish it was a little bit more rigid. And I'm hoping that in future iterations, it'll be kind of like the Endorphin Speed where it has a little bit more, I guess, um, pushback to it. I think this is a little bit too too flexible, at least for my taste. So hopefully in future iterations, they'll give you a little bit more uh, rigidity in that forefoot area. And I do wish that they include the stack height or a little bit more cushion right under the forefoot. Uh, I loved it in the heel area and I just wish it just had a tad bit more in that forefoot region. But other than that, I really just love the ride of the shoe. Super versatile, super light, and super comfortable, which is why I gave it my number one spot. Oh, and one last thing, it does have a weird, when you're walking, it has like a weird heel sensation just because of the curvature or the hyper arc in this shoe. Um, so it works really well when you're running, but when you're walking in it, it does have kind of a weird sensation in that heel area just because it has an aggressively shaped rocker in the rear of the shoe. Just, just something to note. I've also done a full review on the shoe. If you want to check it out here, I'll put the link somewhere up here. Coming in at number two is the Razor XS, which weighs seven ounces, costs $140, has a 30 millimeter in the heel, 26 in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop. Now, why did I use this as my number two? Well, I thought this was a really good, fast daily trainer. The cushioning was just right at least for me, where it wasn't too soft and it wasn't too firm. It was like a really good middle ground. And on top of all of that, it had a really wide platform, especially in the forefoot area, which is something I like. And you do have, I guess, some heel support with these kind of lateral walls on both sides of the shoe. So it's a nice, relatively stable option that can pick up the pace while providing enough cushioning if you want to kind of pick up the mileage as well. So what did I not like about this shoe? Well, I wasn't crazy about the upper. It's not a bad upper and it's not, I would say, amazing upper. It just wasn't the most comfortable. Now, the upper itself is like a plastic sticky open air mesh. You can see directly through it. It's incredibly, incredibly breathable. Wouldn't use it for the winter time, but I think if you need ventilation, this is definitely a good option. Uh, I just wish it had a better, I guess, level of comfort. And I realized they're trying to keep the weight down. I just wasn't crazy about the kind of that plasticky feel of the mesh, especially if you uh, kind of need to get a closer, tighter fit on your foot because it does have a smidge of extra room. But overall, I thought it was a really fun, stable, fast shoe to run in that had just the right amount of hyperburst cushioning. Now the hyperburst here, I would say uh, you definitely get a little bit of squish to it. It's definitely not um, overly soft and it's not overly firm. Again, it kind of walks that line that allows you to pick up the pace while giving you a nice level of comfort with the level of cushioning that it has. Number three is the Speed Elite, which only weighs 5.7 ounces, has 28 millimeters in the heel, 24 in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop, and it costs $180. So why did I pick this as number three? Well, it's incredibly light, very fast, and just is a great shoe if you want to use it for like, I'd say like a shorter race day, maybe up to like a half marathon. The forefoot has a carbon fiber infused plate that is really stiff, so uh, it allows you to pick up the pace very easily. There's not a lot of mush to it. You do get, I guess, a very thin, uh, very thin bit of hyperburst foam, especially in that heel area, and then gets really firm up in the forefoot. As far as the upper goes, it's paper thin with like a paper thin ton, you can see right through it, it's incredibly breathable. The shoe is definitely meant uh, to go for those faster paces. The outsole has strategic Goodyear tire rubber in the forefoot and heel area with a lot of exposed hyperburst foam. I didn't have any issue with the grip mainly because I just kept it on the roads uh, when in fairly good conditions. Uh, it is, I would say, more of a racing shoe than anything else. Definitely not a daily trainer uh, just because of how light and responsive it is. So what did I not like about this shoe? Well, I think it's pretty much only good for those faster paces. I wish I had maybe a little bit more cushion. Uh, it's not as versatile as some other options. So I think it's like a one purpose use shoe only and it is very firm. So if you're someone who doesn't want a firm shoe or wants something made a little bit more versatile or could go maybe at some slower paces, I would go with a different option. But overall, if you're someone who wants a really light, quick, responsive, stiff shoe with a, a carbon infused plate, I think it works well. Uh, just maybe could use a little bit more cushioning. And I would also say it does have kind of that race fit with a really snug upper. Coming in at number four is the Razor Plus. This shoe only weighs 6.9 ounces costs $135, has 28 millimeters in the heel with a 24 in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop. So what did I like about this shoe? Well, I really liked the hyperburst and midsole. Now you're probably wondering, aren't they all hyperburst midsoles? Yes, but uh, like I said before, there are different versions of hyperburst. This hyperburst version is probably the softest and bounciest out of all six shoes I tried. Now I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to walk and run in. It gives you a really cool underfoot sensation. I'm hoping maybe uh, they have it on some other 
models, but this version of Hyperburst is just really comfortable and very fun. Moving on to the outsole, you get full Goodyear tire rubber coverage here. There's no exposed Hyperburst foam that's touching the ground. It's all just uh, relatively thick rubber coverage. I will say it is a relatively a smooth pattern. There's no uh, massive lugs, kind of like you see like on a Brooks Ghost or something like that. I personally didn't have any issues with traction, uh, but it is something to note that if you want a little bit more grip, uh, you might want to go in a different direction depending on what kind of surfaces you're running on. But for me, it worked just fine for road running. So what did I not like? Well, I'm not crazy about the upper. It wasn't my favorite, not the most comfortable, it didn't fit the best. It had a really narrow toe box, in the, especially in that toe area. I wish that maybe just a smidge more room, or maybe you wish it was just a little bit wider. And then the ankle area, I noticed some rubbing on the outside. Uh, we're just kind of kept rubbing against my ankle in a weird way that I didn't have on any other shoes. So overall, is it a good shoe? Yes, I just wish that they kind of refined the fit of the upper, maybe widen the toe box, make the ankle area a little lower, have a little bit more cushion there. Uh, but the midsole itself, it was a lot of fun, super bouncy, and probably my favorite implementation of the Hyperburst foam as far as a fun and comfort factor goes. Coming in at number five is the Ride 9. This shoe costs $130, weighs 8.4 ounces, has 34 millimeters in the heel with 28 in the forefoot for a six millimeter drop. So what did I like about this shoe? Well, it's just a nice reliable option that works. There's nothing that made me absolutely love it and there's nothing that made me hate it. It's just kind of like a nice reliable daily trainer. Now I will say that the Hyperburst uh, setup or formulation here seemed to be a little bit, I guess on the firmer side of things, it's not like a soft and mushy, uh, I'd say like a Brooks Ghost had a little bit more, I guess, plushness to it. Um, so you get a little bit more responsiveness here on the Ride 9. The other thing too is you kind of notice the Hyper Arc uh, rocker geometry, uh, there was a nice flow to it uh, with a little bit of the curve in the heel that gives you a nice transition to the forefoot area. The outsole features quite a bit of Goodyear tire rubber. You get a little bit more texture compared to some of the other options we took a look at. And you do get thick rubber coverage, which should help with the durability of the shoe. Overall, I thought this was just a nice, classic, reliable daily trainer. So what did I not like about this shoe? Well, I will say it does have a snug fit. It wasn't too snug for me, but if you have a wider foot, I could see how that could be an issue. And honestly, there was nothing that really let me down. It just works as a nice, reliable daily trainer. But on the flip side, there was nothing that maybe kind of a get out in the bed in the morning to use this shoe. Uh, it just works. And you have all the different options uh, for shoes to use. I want something that kind of makes it exciting or fun to use, especially out of all the other shoes I tried here. So is it a nice, reliable daily trainer? Yes, with a nice flow from that hyper arc geometry. Yes, has, a, I guess, a more firm ride to it, which does help you pick up the pace uh, with a decent amount of cushioning. But there's nothing that is makes it stand out from all the other options out there. So is it a good shoe? Yes. But is it a super fun, exciting shoe? I'd say probably not. And last at number six, kind of in its own category, is the Razor Trail. This shoe weighs 8.3 ounces, has 32 millimeters in the heel, and 28 in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop. So what did I like about this shoe? Well, for a trail shoe, it's relatively light, which is really good, especially with the amount of cushioning you get. So the weight to cushioning ratio was really good for me just because I like to have a little bit more cushion on some of those longer efforts, or just when you're going over some of those harder surfaces. You do tend to feel, there's no like rock plate or anything, so you do kind of feel it in the forefoot a little bit. Um, and the traction, I thought, works really well on softer surfaces, so like grass, mud, and dirt, just because you get the lugs really far apart, and the lugs are Goodyear tire rubber, but they are a little bit softer. So I noticed like on rocks and everything, they tend to move around. You kind of feel your foot move just slightly. Um, so if you want something for, I guess you're running over rocks and things like that, it might not be ideal, but for like gravel, uh, mud, grass, things like that, it worked really well for me. So what did I not like about this shoe? Well, it wasn't the most stable. I wish that it had maybe a little bit of a wider base. I noticed my foot kind of rolling to the side sometimes uh, just because you do get a, quite a bit of cushion in the heel area. Maybe it's just, it felt maybe a little bit more narrow. Uh, the other thing too is it doesn't have a gusseted tongue. So I didn't personally have this issue, but I think debris can get in there. I like to have a gusseted tongue too, just because the water and things like that can easily get inside the shoe. Uh, and maybe the toe guard too could have a little bit more structure to it. it is pretty flimsy. I, I realize they're trying to save on weight, but um, having a toe guard, I end up kicking a lot of rocks because I don't watch where my feet are going. Uh, so having that would have been a nice touch. Uh, the other thing too, and this is minors, I wish the shoelaces were a little bit longer. That's kind of an easier fix. You can always just replace them, uh, but it's just a minor detail nonetheless. So here is my final ranking. We've got the Max Road 5, Razor XS, Speed Elite, Razor Plus, Ride 9, and then the Razor Trail, which is kind of in its own category. So overall, I think all these shoes definitely work. Some are definitely better than others, depending on your running style, but I would have no problem running in any of these shoes. There's nothing that was like a fatal flaw that would really keep me from using it day in and day out. Um, and again, all of these shoes are under 8.7 ounces, which is crazy. And that really kind of goes to the Hyperburst midsole and that, that technology with a small cell structure and allows it to have a great uh, cushion to weight ratio. So you get a nice level of stack height without having to pay for it in the weight department.
As far as weight goes, this is the ranking from lightest to heaviest. It goes in this order. It goes Speed Elite, Razor Plus, Razor XS, Razor Trail, and then Rye 9 and Max Road 5. Again, all of them under 8.7 ounces, but this is the lightest shoe to the heaviest shoe. So in conclusion, after trying all six Skechers Performance running shoes, or at least the ones they sent me, I will say that the Hyperburst foam is on the more firm end of things. It's not like a soft, mushy foam, with the exception of the Razor Plus, which definitely had a lot of balance and plushness to it. So like, compared to like a Hoka, and things like that. I think that the Hyperburst foam is a little bit more responsive, a little bit more firm, and helps you kind of pick up the pace while still providing a nice level of impact protection. So it kind of comes down to your preference. And I think other companies too are starting to copy this super critical foam just because of the weight to cushion properties that it has. But you can have different formulations of it, different iterations. So I'll be kind of curious to see what Skechers does with this. The other big thing is that all the uppers are really thin, uh, really breathable, and the tongues were non-gusseted and very thin as well. Sometimes they would fold under uh, my foot which is kind of a bummer but it, depending on who set it up it might not be an issue but I did notice that just because the tongue was so thin uh, I think I forgot to mention that for some of the reviews but overall definitely a good lineup of shoes uh, and it's just I'm curious to see what they do in 2022 well that concludes my review I hope you found it helpful please let me know in the comments if you change anything change the order or if you pick a different favorite than I did also please remember to like and subscribe it really helps me make these videos I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Views hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you guys on the next one Thanks.